So far we've looked at repeating groups and also repeating groups with embedded tables. And here we have a new challenge. We have a repeating group. We've got subject John Doe, subject Jane Roe, and what looks like table data below that. But the table boundaries aren't being adhered to. In other words, the description doesn't fit within the description column boundaries. So that means that we can't use the table element to capture this data. But we can take a different approach, and that is a nested repeating group. So let's take a look at how we do that. We'll start out by simply uh, creating a header. And once again, we've got a one-page document, so we'll be able to disable the footer and create a static text element to actually capture some information to identify the form. And we'll keep it really simple here. We'll make this required. And under static text, I can capture this string. And we're done. Um, I'll test this really quickly. And we have some good results. And the next thing I will do is I'll create our first repeating group. So I will name this repeating group RG1. And we recall under relations, a best practice is to refer to this repeating group, the last found instance, and look below the bottom of this instance to make sure that we look for data from a top to bottom orientation. Then we can go about finding our data. And I'll just use simple label fields to find things like subject. And I'm going to say that I want to find the subject that's nearest to my header so that if this subject instance is of higher quality, we won't skip this one. We'll go directly to this one right away. So I'll use the nearest function and say nearest to the header, keyword form ID. Let's match and test this. So we're getting some uh, bad data here, and we probably can fix that by lowering our error percentage. Perfect. So we're getting subject John Doe first, then subject Jane Roe, and our last repeating group is empty. Now let's grab the ID number and date of test fields. I'll just hold my control key down and clone this and I'll call this ID number and my label will be ID number colon and let's decrease the size oh, 300 should be fine before we test, let's also grab date of test. And our label is date of test, colon. And by cloning these, I still have the relation nearest to the element keyword form ID. So that was actually a time saving move. Let's match and see what our results look like. Great. So our first iteration of our repeating group gets the data John Doe, ID number, date of test, and Jane Roe, ID number, date of test, and the last one is empty. So I'll hit the backspace key and go back a little bit and I see that we're actually capturing this colon. So one small change here, 
the label should include the colon, and that will fix that problem. I can retest. Great. Looks like our results are perfect. Let's place two more elements in our first repeating group. The first one is going to be another label field to grab the number of test questions administered. So I'll go here and I'll clone and I'll grab this string and rename this and I'll copy this string and use it as my label. And because we cloned it, once again, our relation is nearest to the header. Let's see how we did here. Really good. We're getting that data and that data. And the last repeating group is all blank. Now let's take a look at the form. I'm going to grab this test batch number string. I'll add an element of the static text type, and I'll call this keyword test batch number. Under static text, I'll say take spaces into account and permit multiple, multiple lines. And then we will type in test batch number. So we can see that we're getting that string as well, but it doesn't have a nearest to function. So it actually grabbed the wrong data. If I click on relations and say nearest to element, we'll say nearest to the header. We'll retest. So when we're learning Flexi Layout Studio, um, if everything goes perfectly right the first time, actually there's a little bit less learning going on. So now we're getting the test batch number in the proper place. And once again, we're getting the test batch number in the proper place. And the last repeating group is all blank, which is great. Now let's create a repeating group within this first repeating group. So we're going to nest repeating groups. Here I will add an element of the repeating group type, and I will call this RG2, repeating group 2. And under relations, I will once again refer to essentially myself, which is that instance is grayed out. But if I say last found, it's not grayed out. And I can say look below the bottom. And that will make sure that I'm looking in a downward direction. And in this repeating group, I'm going to look for this test batch number. So I will create character string element. And I will call this TB number. And so to target this um, test batch number properly, I will start off with a regular expression and say that I'm really looking for a number that's between two and three characters long. And also, I am looking to use relations. So I want to look below keyword test batch number, current instance, below the bottom, and then also I'll duplicate that to the right of the left. And so that's looking in this direction. You see this arrow? And I'll duplicate that left of right. That's the other boundary. 
and nearest to keyword test batch number. Let's see how that works for us. So we've got repeating group instance one. We can click here. We see that we found all of our data. Now we have a nested repeating group and we can see that we found this data and this data, but then we also found data from the next repeating group. So there's a problem that we need to deal with here. We've talked about inheritance in groups. So I can go to the repeating group two element and define an additional relation. So what I want to say is that we want to look above the label field test questions administered. So we're going to say above the top. We'll add that relation. So now we're confining our search area and the easiest way to see that is to simply match. So here's my first repeating group and I am capturing all of this data. Then in my nested repeating group, I'm capturing first the um, test batch number 106, then the number 109, and this last item is empty, but we're constrained in our search area. We're looking above this uh, labeled field. Next, we'll grab the entry value based on the position of this test batch number. So I'll add another element of the character string type and I'll call it entries. And I'll also say do not find this element if TB number is not found. And I'll go to relations and I will say that we want to look first to the right of the current instance of TB number right of right. And that's our first um, relation. I could give that a little bit of an offset. So that moves away from the TB number a little bit. Then I can duplicate this and say above bottom minus 20. and below top minus 20. If we highlight all three of these, we can see what our search area is. And it might grab too much data. So we can say nearest to the element TB number. And once again, we can specify that this is a number that's between two and three characters long. Let's test this. We've got our nested repeating group, and first of all, we found those two, TB number and entries, as well as TB number and entries. And here we found nothing, which is great. So two more fields to go. We wanna grab the total and the description. We will add an element of the character string type and call it their total. And once again, we'll use relations. Uh, but we should first say, do not find this element if our base element, TB number, is not found. And then our relations will be pretty straightforward. Entries. We want to look to the right of the right boundary with an offset maybe of 20 again. And above bottom minus 20. And below top minus 20. 
And we also want to look nearest to which element? Entries. Let's test this. Here's our nested repeating group. Here's our first instance. We found TB number, then we found entries, and there's the search area we just painted to the right of entries, above bottom, below top, minus 20, to the right with an offset of 20, a number between two and three characters, and we've got it. Last but not least, let's grab the description. I'll add an element of the character string type. I'll call it description. And once again, I'll say do not find this element if my anchor element in this nested repeating group is not found. And then under relations, relative to the position of the test batch number, I want to look to the right of the right boundary with an offset. Uh, I'll put in 120, so let's scooch that over a little bit. And then I also want to look below the bottom of the TB number with an offset of zero and nearest to the element TB number. So this is what you can't do with the table element. We can't capture columnar data if it doesn't fit within column boundaries, but we can capture this data with a repeating group. So let's see if this is going to work for us. We'll open up our repeating group. We'll open up the first instance of the top level repeating group. Again, we've got all this data, no problem. And then our nested repeating group captures um, first instance, we get the TB number, we get the entry, the total, and there we have the description. Let's hit the backspace key. The second instance gets the truly the second instance of the test batch number the sec second entry and total, and the second description. So this third entry is all empty, so we don't have to worry about that. Finally, I want to talk about how to map these blocks. So I'm going to add a block of the repeating group type. I'll call this repeating group 1, and I'll map it to my first repeating group. It is way up here. I'll say that I want to match uh, items in order of finding. And I need to add my elements. Um, so first off, I'm going to get the subject. And maybe it's quickest for me just to go here. And subject, we don't want the entire label field, the label, the gap in the field. We just want the field and I'll name the subject. The next block is going to be for ID number, and I'll map that. And then I want to get date of test. And my source element is right here. The field value. And then the next step is test questions administered, and we'll map that. So there's all of our data from our first repeating group. So I'll add a block of the repeating group type again. This is a nested repeating group block. I'll call this RG2, and my source element will be here. And I'm going to say once again, in order of finding, and I'll add my fields here. Add block of the text type to get the first off the TB number. So I'll just copy and paste that. Next, I will get the field entries.
there we go. And then total. And finally, description. And that's how you map nested repeating groups. You create your first repeating group and all the constituent fields within that repeating group. Then your nested repeating group gets built within that repeating group, just like the element tree. So pretty straightforward, easy to understand. The last thing I've done here is I've created a document definition and I brought in the AFL file from the Flexi layout where I just mapped the repeating group blocks. And here I've got my results. So even within the document definition editor, I can see what kind of data will be presented to the verifier and exported. So I'll click testing run test. And we've got our first repeating group with John Doe, ID number, date of test, number of questions, and then embedded in that, we've got our values for entries and total and description. And then our next TB number, entries, total, and description. And then uh, Jane Rowe's data is right here. So that's a very powerful feature. A lot of financial documents, uh, medical documents, medical billing documents, um, uh, educational documents, transcripts. There's a, there's a lot of data that falls into this category. Um, it's difficult data to capture uh, oftentimes, but Flexi Layout Studio really makes it easy, and this ability to nest repeating groups is extremely powerful.